welcome back to session two. Gonna kind of continue working around in the same vein that I did yesterday and just filling in um, these lights and darks. Especially today, we're gonna focus more on the drapery or the clothing fabric on each of the models. And um, once these this major kind of underpainting block in is complete, then we uh, will allow a little time for it to dry and some of the other areas will probably be dry by the time we uh, want to get started next week on some of the final color layer um, or hopefully the final color layer sometimes it's not the final sometimes it is uh, next week so glad to have you and uh, we're just going to get started feel free to um, ask questions even if you're watching this at a later time you can drop in a question be happy to answer it and uh, just know we're going to kind of keep continue working on this for as long as it takes. We're just going to stream it each day and see what happens. So please, uh, please pop in and say hi. Uh, join us at any moment. Um, come in, come out, leave a comment, don't leave a comment. Uh, be glad to, to hear from you. And uh, we just want to hang out, create art and do so have some fun with you so thanks for being here and let's get it underway so much like i did the other parts i'm going to focus on largely on the darkest areas but also building up the lightest areas this garment here is a it's a white source it's a little it's a little of an off-white but it, it will it needs to be built up uh, so that it can really sh shine and and kind of gleam and that local value can be correct uh, in the ultimate finish of the painting. So we're gonna get started laying in some of those lighter colors uh, as well as some of those darker colors and more or less block out the, the fabric, the drapery. And so here we go. Thanks for being here. Painting the Angel Gabriel. And then the fabric block in. I'm I'm looking for Much like uh, my other video where I do the drapery, I'm <clears throat> drapery tutorial. I'm just thinking about these shapes, just finding the major shapes to put into place, so so that this starts sitting in space, having a little bit of volume, and you know, I just shape by shape, piece by piece as I'm going and slowly it, it materializes but it does um, it does take some time and it, ultimately it'll, it'll get there this stage is fun anyway because You get to just describe the major major shapes in the drapery. You don't have to worry too much. I mean, you don't, again, you don't want to lose your drawing, but at the same time, you can kind of be loose and, and blocking it in quickly, finding the major, major players that are telling us about that, the volume of fabric.
got Sean and David in the studio with me today, as usual. So happy to have the company. It's great to work with great people. Hello. Trying to get something done. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> we'll probably be on for about the next hour. So if that allows you to plan your morning, or if you're watching this at a later time, plan the rest of uh, your time. Um, Hey, Corey said that painting already looks awesome. Good to see you, buddy. And he said, hey, Sean. Hey, Corey. Hey, Corey. Glad to have you, man. Yep, we are building up. The drapery today. We'll put a final color layer down, um, but it'd be nice to give it a little bit of a foundation underneath it all to, to for the little like those other color layers to just sit and rest upon. <clears throat> so do you not want me to send out a Patreon post? Um, or you still want me to? Yeah, go for it. And of course, all the, the socials. And we'll send out another, another one later today because there's another thing you can plan for your schedule. Hopefully, we'll be back on a little bit later. Uh, um, at least that's the plan anyway. Maybe about 1 p.m. Central. Um, Central, so if you if you're thinking about, oh, I can't hang around very long at this point, you can always uh, sneak back in later this afternoon. We'll have another session going. You know, if this is your first time uh, popping in, we are planning to do this entire painting if it can be helped, uh, if it can be done uh, online uh, and live. So you can come in any part of the process and say hi check in, log out, check back in, or just leave it up in the background if you want. That's fine too. I don't, I don't mind the watch hours, so um, we'll, we'll take all we can get. So in doing this, I'm just looking for th those little shapes, just watching, following, uh, the shapes I see in in the drapery and I just go from piece to piece kind of a slow march across the, the figure here um, I do it the same way um, if I were if I were in front of the live model um, there'd be kind of an overall block I'd probably achieve first. I wouldn't be quite as metic meticulous, but eventually I'd have to come back down to really looking at each one of these shapes.
somewhere an iPhone is being typed upon. Open today, we, we see our friends from across the world. Uh, that would be fun. We'll see. See who drops in. If you're in your studio today, painting, creating, great. See, I'll see the shape in the fabric here. And then I'll look at the next shape and I'll, as I'm seeing it, you know, it kind of goes here and then blocks here, stops here, goes here. And within reason, kind of like a landscape painting, you don't have to be, there's, there's some fudging space um, when it comes to the uh, painting drapery. Within reason, it's it's still okay. Um, you don't have to get it just exact. Unless you're being graded on that sort of thing. And if you are, I'm sorry. Hey, I got Patreon and awesome. Instagram. I also turned my phone on to silent, so. <laughs> You're good. There's no more clickety clacker. I thought it was, uh, it was, it was funny. I thought. I'm glad that you were, you were part of it. Currently working on getting some music for the background, but I want to use some friends music. Um, uh, might as well keep it among friends uh, and people that you love. So working on that. Um, so at some point, you know that'll that'll be in play as well. So it won't be nearly as silent. And I think at some point we'll have a lot of people hanging out. <clears throat> be answering questions, having a conversation. Um, as we did about a month ago, relationship advice, whatever. Talking about Turkey and Turkish people and yep, relationship advice in Japan or China or whatever. India. Yeah, India. Basically, we're willing to be your coworkers, uh, if you're working from home, let's put it on. We can all hang out together and do work, do good stuff, create value in this world.
much of a delay, huh? Oh, no. It's just on my phone. That's where I, like, popped it for some reason. Okay. I was like, whoa. How's our, how's the stream health look today? Mm. Giving us any indication? It looks better than it better? did yesterday, oh, but we're still popping that warning. That the stream rate is lower than the recommended bit rate. But it says the stream status is still good, so. There you go. So who's excited uh, about that um, that D that Dune movie? Right here. Really pumped. Saw an awesome poster this morning of it. Um, wow, the design is um, sort of made it look like. Well, I mean, you just check it out. Look up Dune movie poster, new D Dune movie poster. But um, wow design, I mean, it's just good design, good composition, where the, it is a sand dune on the poster, uh, but the way it curves, it echoes like a, like a planet, and um, it's quite nice, it did very well, bravo, bravo. One of the few movies I was excited about seeing, really loved um, the book and was desperate for a great adaptation. And I think this might be it. I'm not seeing the poster you're talking about. Hmm. Uh, I think, uh... Possibly, if you look through my history, you can see it. Or I did send it to David. I did send it to a real graphic designer. David, so, what did you think of that? It's good. Yeah. It's got a lot of space, which is nice. Is my children yelling? I don't know about what. That's pretty good. Also, the that just that image evokes some of the feeling of desolation that you you get <clears throat> when when reading a book, creating that world in your mind. No, I think it's going to end soon. Maybe. <laughs> Soundproof walls. Uh, maybe we'll invest in them. Uh, Get an actual someday. studio. Oh well, you know, I mean, yeah. Hey, we've got somebody that has one of those. So. Yep. Good thing about what we're gonna do with this afterwards is we're gonna take all of the audio out probably and then just get back with some music or something. So there won't hopefully be any of that in there. It's part of the experience. Art is creating um, part of your environment is part of the experience. Distractions. why plein air painting is so uh, incredible because you you know you're in the space you're there uh, and it changes what you create changes what it looks like so you know it's painting it's 
being altered by the yells of a toddler. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't realize something so small could have such a loud voice. Corey's still on. He can confirm that. Uh oh. My daughter's singing music from Disney. I don't want to. Uh, under the YouTube algorithm to like hear it and then say we're using copyrighted material. It's a good thing on, she's on the way she does it. <laughs> this is slightly off key. Also, no, doesn't really know the words. Yeah, well, you know. So it's her own rendition of the best song. That's possible. Yeah. It's like a cover band. But she's just a solo cover band. Toddler cover band. You would pay to go see that one. I mean, like emotionally or physically? Because... I think emotionally we all would if she had like some amp set up, no microphone, singing in there. You'd really pay to go see her. Yep, just working my way across and finding some new shapes. Using my leaded crystal ground, or my uh, medium here, excuse me, to hopefully build in these lights so that they when we're done rendering everything, they really shine. Just making sure that I don't eat or ingest any of it. Because it's real toxic. You got the one that's really toxic? Yeah, there's quite a few things on here <laughs> that ended up being pretty toxic. And this process is it's just a slow finding of the pieces and once you find enough of them it ends up working so even when you know I myself I'm working on it and I'm like oh this is uh this isn't quite working yet or I, I don't get too upset especially especially in this phase um, because I know how much more work is going to go into each section uh, and description. And so, you know, I just work my way through it slowly and knowing the, the best parts are to come. You should probably get some uh, Trivial Pursuit cards or something, and then we can turn this into a quiz, this quiz show. Be pretty good. You have any? No, uh, no. Uh, not not that anyone isn't like on their computer and can look up the answer, but you know, could use the honor system.
So today I get to go see some of the wood molding um, that is going to go around this painting when it's installed. Uh, along, it, this one along with the six others. There's Yeah, there's two. Yeah, we're doing the five Joyful Mysteries, but then also um, there'll be a couple of uh, icons as well. And they, the, I saw some of the setting yesterday and it just looks amazing. Today I get to go to the studio of um, the artist who is painting, gilding, and building these beautiful wooden ornate pieces that are going to go around this image and I'm super stoked. I'm going to share some pictures of that on Patreon. Uh, just a little bit of like, hey, this is amazing. So if you're, if you're a patron, you get to see what's, uh, where these are going to sit. And then ultimately, if you're a patron, you'll be invited to, um, to see them in their, in their space. So that'll be, I promise you, there's just, there's just nothing like this in, um, probably in the Midwest, uh, being made. And so super stoked to be a part of it and to see it come into being. Sorry about yesterday. Sorry, the yesterday didn't work out. YouTube didn't give you a heads up enough. I don't know what happened. But now it gets to be part of the actual like interesting stuff. Yeah. So just blocking in the whole painting, he gets to see the drapery and stuff being done. Well, it's, it's still a lot of rough blocking in. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Occasionally, it, you know, the, the magic happens, and it, and it can look really finished and done, but oftentimes it's just it's kind of an in-between. Hey, David, if you could try to not creak every... <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I almost dropped the trash can on the floor. Oh. <laughs> you almost dropped yourself on the floor. Not my fault. I can't keep myself up. I can't keep myself up. He said, hey, Sean. Yeah, no problem. I finally caught the stream. I know you guys missed me. We did. I mean, you do bring life to the stream, so... And really, it's a good example of what kind of we hope eventually it could become. Just hanging out with a bunch of people, getting to know people anywhere and everywhere, and hopefully just having 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 fun, getting to know getting to know one another, and encouraging one another in the arts and just in life in general. So it hasn't been terribly exciting yet working on this back. We haven't seen a major turn of the form uh, because mostly the light was falling on the back here. But now we're going to start to turn it. We should see some areas that are darker and we're going to get a little more of a satisfying motion in this way. So sometimes painting is this thing you, you, you keep doing in trust because you're like, okay, I know on the other side of this is enough information for it to for it to work. Um, I just have to keep going. And as soon as you do that, 
get, get past that really uncomfortable spot then suddenly there it is and it's working so Brock what are you, what are you working on these days last last time we saw you had uh, some teacup teacups going how that that painting turn out did you finish it Uh, so I've got um, a couple of mixed synthetics uh, from Utrecht. Uh, I like them. They, they seem to have a long uh, life before they get splayed out, <clears throat> and they just hold up really well. I like I like a bit of a smoother uh, application, and you know, over the years I've kind of landed on really enjoying uh, these these Utrecht brushes. One is. Uh, a, a flat one is a filbert for now i don't really care too much about the shape um i just like these brushes for quick skip quick painting sketches and I'll, I'll use them on the final level or final layer too uh, but it's just they're just some of my favorite brushes to use um i, I like i guess i like mixed synthetic I've, I've spent a lot of brushes a lot of money on brushes i've spent a little bit of money on brushes i've kind of used a little bit of everything but Ultimately, I, I kind of come back to enjoying these, and I couldn't exactly tell you why, except that I, I think basically I like something that keeps its shape, and these seem to do really well. Because I like to, you know, even though I'm using a flat, I'll oftentimes use the edge to describe. Um, rather than picking up another brush, I can just kind of keep going to this one over and over. So right now I just basically have a light and a dark brush, and I'm blocking in the lights and darks uh, on this underpainting layer and I'm just kind of going back and forth between these two just depending on what shape it is that, that I'm blocking in great question thank you you are like that's like that's a good thing I should mention but I just don't think to mention it so bravo already you you've already won the game so thank you I uh, he hasn't started the painting yet he actually lost his grandpa recently, uh, so he took a break from everything for a while since then. But he's going to try to start it as soon as possible, and he'll send the results to the Discord for sure. Great. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry, to, sorry yeah. to hear that, Brian. Yeah, for sure. Loss is never an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we feel the loss because we had gain in that relationship. So, I don't know if you're willing to share anything about your grandpa, but if you are, I know we'd love to hear just what kind of man he was or, you know. Yeah, any stories you'd like to share, feel free. But if you don't want to, you don't have to as well. It is, it's always nice to, to understand a little bit more where people are coming from. This stage, I also have to be careful because if I if I don't watch it myself, I'll start to try to do too much, and that's not the purpose of this. This is kind of a, a little more of a speed speed painting. Um, I know looking in from the outside, you say, "Oh, there's nothing fast about what's happening there," but um, yeah, just working a little quicker. So you just took a white color and then just added like black to it to make the gray? Or? Yeah, mostly my, my mixed black, which is ultramarine and burnt sienna. Uh, and then, yep, I just made a little bit of a gray scale. Wasn't really trying to achieve a warm warmth or a cool color. I mean, it's gonna read a little warmer just because I'm working on top of this raw umber ground. 
uh, ground this wash, but but yeah, we're just I'm just trying to build up some values. said um, he was uh, paraplegic and his life of quality wasn't so great so it was some sort of relief for all of us to let him go. That's heavy. Yeah. He was a very well loved and kind person, had a happy life and gone. Thanks for sharing that man. He said he's sad, but he's not upset or depressed. It's good to grieve those kind of relationships. And it sounds like he, he knew that he was loved, so... That's what it's all about. I mean, this is about a lot more than just that, but... Family is an important thing. Funny, even working on these areas, I think all all of us artists maybe know this. Like, there's a it's a level to which you are you're going somewhere, but you're not terribly uh, excited, or perhaps you're a little concerned, or like, oh, you know, this this area looks hard, or this area looks detailed, and then you kind of ignore it for a while, but you know, but you know, you're gonna have to go back to it. Um, yeah, I do that. Even in this stage where, like, I'm not quite ready to. Have Which to, part are you avoiding? Ha have to. Uh, oh. Where everything kind of connects things. Yeah, here where, where it's gonna get really busy. So, I'm gonna find myself slowly mustering up the the courage. Right now, I'm not. I mean, sometimes I'm following form with the mark, but not all the time. And I'm just kind of doing it enough to be able to tell what's happening. Yeah, this series of paintings I mean, this process is going to be repeated multiple times, so uh, I think it's <clears throat> worth anyone's wild to come back check in on it see where we're see where we're going with it um, yeah because this whole thing is gonna probably last up until the end of the year yeah. so yep. like five months although I'm sincerely hoping hoping that I, I do better than that but we'll we'll see You know, and if I were trying to really follow form, you know, my mark would do something kind of like this, where I'd be coming in, okay, this is a deep part, and then it would be turning around. Um, and that's a very effective way to, with mark, tell what's happening in that volume. I mean, you can you can do it in other ways too, but following following the form, following that almost as though you're just kind of sculpting around it. It does a lot for creating volume in your paintings. 
and we'll get there in the final layers. Sometimes I'll even take a fan brush or take a, a kind of a soft buffer brush and after I lay down the color kind of just move those lines around because it almost instantly creates that volume that you're looking for. Brock, we're very glad to have you, and we'll be doing this for a long time. So, man, come and spend time any any day. We're doing it. It's happy to hang out. For a little longer, so yeah, we'll be we'll be back at about one central, so one or Chicago. If you're, if you're, if you're like, where, where, what city? Brock says he's here till the end. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad we got to we got to commit in one. All right, Brock. I'll talk to you later, bro. See you guys. See ya. I can watch. All right, du pulling double duty. Thanks, David. Maybe someday we'll figure out this thing better so that I can see what's happening. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not there yet. We, we're, we're just getting started with this. You have to figure it out. So blocking in, blocking in, blocking in. I'd like to, by the end of today, and you know, I know I only have a little bit more time, it'd be nice to have this whole area blocked in, you know, kind of set goals for yourself. And then uh, the figure on this side have uh, most of the darks built in. The, the fabric here is, it's not as light as the fabric here. So I might not necessarily need as much built up lights. The, this um, ground layer enough to paint, you know, deeper reds and deeper blues on top of, um, so it, it should be fine. But I will need to build up some of the darks. Some of these areas get pretty dark. Um, just the local value of the red and the blue is uh, is really dark when it gets into the shadow. Um, so we're, we're we're getting there. Brock, if it can be believed, uh, the the ducks that were so little a month ago have now uh, they we we let them go since they were they were wild already, so we weren't letting go of domesticated ducks. Uh, we, we we had to let them go. They were they were big and they were kind of getting less and less kind of content being around us, and we knew it was time to say goodbye. So they are. In, uh, we took them to a local park that had that has lots of ponds 
um, and lots of wooded area too. So I, I hope that hope that they are safe and well, and that we that we trained them up, gave them their daily swims and and so forth. And so yeah, they're they they are gone. Um, we we inherited another um, that had fallen into a friend of ours window well, and uh, now now that one. Um, is very nearly grown too, so um, we're we are soon to be empty nesters, as it were. All jokes definitely implied. Um, so it's coming. Rock said he was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> about them, at least. S sense sensed it from across uh, the globe. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's a pretty pretty fun. It was a fun experience, you know, for uh, for our kids to be able to, you know, see just I don't know, see it happen, watch watch them. In fact, my my five year old, he, I think he was he was feeling something he didn't realize uh, he was feeling because he said he said every time I look at them, uh, they're growing up, and he's like he's like and and a tear happens in my eye. And that was the best way he could explain, um, I guess, kind of missing the, like, the duckling. Uh, but what, kind of watching them grow up, and I'm like, man, that's pretty much exactly how I feel about you kids. Is you kind of wa I mean, it's just literally right before your eyes uh, changes so fast. So. Rock says, yeah, how quickly they can grow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kids and ducks. Kids and ducks. Ducks way faster. <laughs> yeah. They were, they were pretty big. I mean... Do you have any pets in your home? A little kitty cat or a puppy would be so beneficial for those children. <laughs> we do have wait a one cat, um, and uh, yeah, I, I I do love the cat. I'm very uh, very grateful for him. He's he's super sweet. He he was completely feral, so I mean, uh, you you couldn't even touch him. Uh, wife and I had an apartment a number of years ago, and it, there was a lot, <laughs> there was a lot, a lot of like just stray cats around. Most of them were feral, um, but we, we were able to slowly kind of domesticate this one. And then we brought him into the house and he's been very sweet, but he's still also very skittish and afraid of if anything changes or... <laughs> Uh, if if we even move too fast across the room, if I'm walking by with purpose, you know he gets scared and runs off and hides. So, um, but uh, you know, it it was such that you couldn't even touch him. Um, but now, the kids can kind of climb all over him to a degree, and you know he he'll sit there and take it for a while, and then he's like, okay, I'm done. Um, He's not mean about it. He just he just runs away. He's a, he's a runner, and so yes, we do we do have a cat, and the, the kids kids love the cat. So do we, um, and maybe someday when the kids can be a little older, a little more responsible, we'll we'll do we'll get a dog. Um, just not not quite there yet. Um, I don't want to be the one to have to walk it all the time. <laughs> Same, and they they don't have kitty litters, so they. That's right. Be taken outside, and especially a puppy at night time, so it's like having a baby again. Yeah. Uh, Brock says, "Loving pets teach children how to love every living being, and being merciful to other humans as well." Yeah. Depends, though. I've seen these kids like <laughs> hold these, well, at least the ducks, by the necks, <laughs> and that was a little terrifying well, to see. Yeah. So well, like and it's at the beginning. and and I and I to to, to Brock's point, it's basically. Uh, yeah, they 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 have to learn. They have to learn how to think about. Oh, uh, this is actually not a good way to care for this animal. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely, learning how to care and have mercy. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. Also, with the ducks, it learns how to grieve when somebody leaves. Yeah, and and I, I, I was thinking about that, and I thought there would be a little more sadness, uh, but our our. <laughs> Our, our saying goodbye was cut a little short as my wife sat in some poison ivy uh, as we were going to kind of watch him play in the pond for a little while. And that quickly changed um, what the rest of the night looked like. We had to get home and get cleaned up in hopes that a, a rash didn't develop. Otherwise, yeah, I think we might have had some of those sad moments. But instead, it was like, everybody load up. Got to get home. Got to get clean. Um, so unfortunately we didn't, we didn't really get one of those sweet, sweet goodbye moments. It was a little sad though, as we went to the car, the one we hatched from the egg came running, uh, to us and, um, was crying and I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe this is not, it's not ready. And then I, uh. I was like, okay, if I if I go toward if I go toward it and it um, allows me to pick it up, then okay, we'll we'll load them back up and we'll go. But as soon as I went toward the duck, it tried to run away. So I thought, okay, I think you're ready. Um, you just you may not be quite ready, but you also don't want me to be around. So I'm just gonna trust that you know best. Um, so yeah, so we did. So we did, we did say goodbye, um, and I was surprised there weren't any tears, but again, also, it was, it was a little hastened due to poison ivy exposure. Poison ivy is no bueno, even when you're sad. <laughs> did you get, did you get it, David? Yep. Recently? Uh, the last couple of years? It's been a year. I got it just on the top of my hand, but it lasted for like a month. It was so itchy. So was that though at the same time that Sean got it? Yeah. Just so I got it. <laughs> Sean got it cut, <laughs> and mm. then it got in the cut, and so it like inflamed the cut, and everything was inflamed. It was not a, not a good experience for all of us. And then one of my friends got it around his waist, and he blamed me. <laughs> and I was like, it's, it was on the top of my hand. I don't even know how it got on my waist. <laughs> so I did not take that one. Um, Brock says, so long for being a duck dad. Yep. Always hurt me seeing them quacking and waddling away from me one last time. Yep. It, it stung, absolutely. There was... Uh... I did, I did feel some, some level of sadness and, but, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm, their, their place is obviously in, in, in nature and, you know, they, they would have been feeling the call this fall anyway, and they probably would have left even if we probably would have let them out one time and been outside with them and they just would have flown off because it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing what I was made to do. Um, Yep, yeah, that's mean to leave and go to warmer climates. So yep, still still on it here, probably for another fifteen minutes. Um and then we'll take a break and return at one central um or thereabouts. Sorry, you, you can't be too uh work working from home. Uh yeah, you you can't be too specific sometimes those those times don't end up work, working out. Um, but we'll see, that's, that's the plan anyway. Yeah, poison ivy, uh, it, it can get, I, I had a friend I worked with um, probably about 15 years ago who, he fell into it. So he got, he got, I mean, so we're talking a lot of exposure and the, his system was so overrun with the Urushal that he, 
he had kidney failure. So, so much toxin was in his body. He had kidney failure. And he had to start uh, doing dialysis regularly, <laughs> uh, which was just shocking. Um, so that is nothing to be toyed with. <laughs> There's an awesome video on YouTube um, of, of a guy showing how to clean it off effectively. And um, yeah, it's good, good stuff. Talks about the properties of it and how it works. And um, it has, you know, crazy millions and millions, millions of views. And um, he's just sharing it for the goodness of the world. <laughs> This is fun seeing even at this stage, seeing it start to piece together um, is, is always fun for me. There's in, oh, probably in a session or two, maybe early into next week, I'll start, I'll hit the spot that I never like hitting in painting at all. It's what, just what I call the, um, I don't know, the dark place <laughs> uh, in, in creating where you've done a lot of work on a piece, but it's not quite done. And it, you just, you want, you want to quit and it doesn't matter. I, I like, I want to quit every time I hit that space. Cause I'm like, oh, I've done so much. It's not there. I'm not seeing the promise yet of, of all the work I've put into it. And I basically want to quit. So that, uh, that, that sort of doesn't go away. I was talking to a college friend of mine about his, um, his, art, his art practice. And he was telling me, he's asking me, he's like, you know, hey, you know, you've, uh, you've been at this for a number of years. D does, does some of this still happen? And he would describe like the painting process and the creative process. And, I, and he was, he was a little sad to find out that it doesn't go away. Cause I was like, well, it kind of doesn't go away. I still feel the very same about midway through a piece, uh, where I, I just want to give up. Um, and so right now I'm still in the early stages. Early stages is always exciting. Uh, cause all the potential, um, is there and it's coming together and, like that's, it's exciting, but soon and very soon, um, I'll, I'll have lost that initial vitality and that happens in every piece. And I think it's good to remember, um, because then that, that keeps us, uh, at least ready for it. Like, Hey, okay. I know this is going to come. Um, and I want to, I want to get through this. I want to finish this piece and have the, the wherewithal to finish. Rock says, I can relate to that urge of quitting really well. Yeah. yeah. So it, it never goes away. And I, I think that's, that's a good thing to realize too. It's just, it's just there. Um, and so the, and I think that is, that's the key, you know, who, who of us is willing to keep going when, um, when, when the reward isn't there. I talked about this a little bit yesterday too, um, where this is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like working out every day. It's not necessarily fun, um, unless you're David, which I've said that before here too. Um, it's not necessarily fun, um, <clears throat> but you know that part of it, um, you, you know the value then, you know the ultimately, okay, I know this is good. And so kind of like this process of laying down um, this underpainting, yeah, it's not always very rewarding um, but knowing, okay, this is, this is what's going to create 
the, the foundation for the rest of the piece. So, I mean, I have to kind of keep trusting, even though it's not really enjoyable at the time, that this is going to produce some good results. Kind of like hitting the gym. Uh, it's like, okay, this is going to produce good results. It's going to hopefully keep me alive longer <laughs> and, and in a more healthy state. Um, but right now it's, uh, it's not all that exciting. So, um, gotta stick through it, stick, stick to it, stick through it, see it to the end. See, I like using uh, this brush I was talking about because then I can kind of turn it on its edge, uh, which is probably ruining it faster than it would, but turning it on, on its edge, catching and describing um, those, those parts uh, or when, when I need a, a smaller brush, but that allows me just to kind of continue to use this one. I think it's more about the time it takes, if it takes more time to finish it, I start to feel disappointed and overwhelmed by the painting itself more and more. And that's from Ruck, and that's why I love painting a la prima. Single shot to the result, baby. Yeah, um, I'm with you. I mean, 100%, uh, I, I have to agree. Um, and a, a lot of the smaller still life paintings I make, that's how I'll, I'll do the work. These bigger, bigger figurative pieces, I'll, I'll do, the, uh, I'll do the more indirect method. Um, plus, I, I think I like visually how it looks, and especially for this piece, you know, uh, doing the enunciation, um, I am drawing from the aesthetics of Caravaggio and and other Italians, other Italian painters, and so in doing so, um, I want that look and so this is really the this is the this is the way that I'm gonna make make the piece happen just because I think within within the context you know this um, it's not a church but the space the client is creating is going to look like a church um, and I, I want to be pulling on all those themes both visually and technique um, just so that you know, someone someone stepping into the space, whether they realize it or not, um, is picking up on some of those cues, and and I hope uh, creating you know really just a unique experience uh, within this uh, person's home. Yeah, so these are all going into uh, someone's home. Um, very very excited to. Brock commented on early com earlier comment. Yeah, and that's why I paint small still life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I like to do lots of those too. Um, and so it's yeah. We'll, we'll we'll probably do that too. We'll have a nice. Well, the rest of my videos uh, on here are I they're, they're they're all a la prima pretty much um, and kind of one one shot uh, one shot works. Whether, whether I'm doing the drapery there or <clears throat> let's see because I mean if I guess if I really tried I could try to make this but some of the, the lighter values um, I'm just not quite ready to I'd like to let that to dry and then build again on top of it um, just so there's a little more of those semi-transparent layers having fun Rock says, painting this size with two figures, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, it's too much to paint in one city. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. Um, I think mean, there's probably painters that do. Yeah, I, I, I think, I don't know, Le legend has it, I don't know if this is true or not, but legend has it, uh, Whistler um, uh, would, 
if he couldn't finish a painting in one sitting, he basically threw it out. <laughs> so I, I don't know how true that is, but uh, ur urban legend is, you know, of course he's famous for many pieces, but mostly known for Whistler's Mother. Um, that's one of the kind of famous pieces. And if you've ever seen uh, Mr. B in the movie, uh, that's the, the painting that's fe featured in that, which is, 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 is pretty funny. I always loved Mr. Bean. Um, and yeah, so I guess if that's true, he made Whistler's mother in one sitting. And if so, hey, I'm, a, I'm impressed. See, I'm so lazy, I've been like trying to avoid blocking the sin down here. <laughs> so like, oh, all these lines, I don't want to deal with it. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Sometimes I don't paint them all. Uh-oh, I just let that out. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Just kidding. But seriously, I don't, I don't paint them all. There's no need to. enough of the fabric to tell us what's happening with the figure, which, you know, the, the, the linear tells us the figure's kind of curved in like this and hunched over, and those lines help describe what's happening. Because we all know we, we live in clothes. We, we get used to, like, oh, okay, the stress is here, so we know the shoulder is pulling it here. And I, I suppose if I were really good at that sort of thing, I'm I'd just be able to do it without reference, but but I'm not. Still require a lot of reference. But also haven't been been tested on that, so I guess maybe maybe I know more than I know. And then if you didn't use a reference, maybe you could do it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if in this in the same way. I mean, I definitely get to spaces and paintings where I do have to invent. But I've got, you know, a whole lot of reality around it, you know, so it's like, okay, well, that's a little easier. Yeah. Um, to say over time, could you probably just because you've painted enough cloth and enough faces that you could just paint? memory? I don't know. I mean, I, I would, th I would think that, so, so I think there's some level of this that happens where, you know, I've painted so many faces, um, cause I love figurative work. Um, I, you know, paint so many faces over the years that I do think there is a level to which I don't think about it anymore. I know kind of the rules of the face um, and, and how, you know, the structure works and how the, the coloration changes depending on how close you are to facial features and there's the whole thing of color banding and that's a whole nother thing to look up on Google is color banding. And so, so there's some degree to that that, you know, I'm, I'm almost not looking, but, but I am. And so, so I think there's a de degree of that, but again, I, I don't know that I think I would always require something kind of telling me what's there and helping out. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think I notice it because when I try to jump to other subject matter, like if I'm doing a floral, um, it's like, Hmm, you know, this floral doesn't, I don't have that understanding because I haven't done as many, um, or, la or landscape for that matter. I haven't do I've done as many to know what works, but you know, figurative work is kind of my my love, and and th and that's that's what I know and understand. So so I see other uh, 
painters who do florals who I'm like wow they, they just I think they have a kind of like a, have an understanding of how the face works structure and color um, so that in some ways it feels a little effortless I think the same thing happens with like an artist like Daniel Keyes when he's painting floral uh, just incredible or, or Michael Klein painting a floral you know these these guys just they intuitively understand understand it from doing it over the years and it just it just comes out and you're like wow so you, so this is a, a cinched area up here and you know there are a bunch because there's a kind of an elastic in, in the collar I am not going to try to achieve achieve that whatsoever um, by like you know meticulously painting each little uh, fold of the fabric but you know when I step back unfocus my eyes and look at it okay I see the value changes a little bit and that'll be enough to tell us along with just some of these other folds what's happening here um, these paintings are also going to be 20 feet in the air uh, on the on the wall so they they won't immediately be able to be seen uh, up close there is the way a stair well and a little bit of a landing works throughout the space it will create uh, you know about a it'll be a lot closer to some of the work uh, but at the same time um, there's some level of detail which is really just going to be too much for something like this um, so still having something that works because that's what we want we want to keep the energy painting energy there and something that works in the space for which it's intended to go going back to your muscle memory um, Brock says you have the anatomical and visual references in your mind painting became something like a muscle memory for you yeah. and he's pretty jealous <laughs> and he said by the way you are using white and some sort of an earth tone maybe raw umber I guess so so I made so I mixed a black that is um, ultramarine and burnt sienna and you know that that would that probably uh, hung out a little bit on the burnt sienna side so it's maybe a little warm uh, but at the same time this um, this is uh, raw umber this just this color here it's a wash so it's not as dark as it would be uh, just kind of wash and I, and I like that it just I, I'm not having to paint next to white um, and painting next to white kind of burns my eyes out <laughs> uh, because I, I can't see the subtle value shifts against that white so I like to put some sort of tone down um, just to work on. It really helps me see better. Like literally your eyes burn out. <laughs> I mean, uh, to a degree, yes. Like if a light is shining on white, uh, my eyes are really sensitive to it. And I'm like, ouch, yeah. It's... D days where it's really overcast um, are the worst. Uh, if I'm out driving, I just, I can't see. Um, it's I can't night drive with lights mm. yeah so I think it's like a similar thing I think uh, headlights they hit and I can't yeah I can't see which is not good for driving so I understand all right I know kind of in a weird spot but I've got to end it for today or well just for now and be back in about a little over two hours probably um, if all my meetings and everything go as planned, uh, sometimes they take a little longer, so uh, probably should plan on 1.30 being uh, startup time again. So uh, Brock, thanks for hanging around, asking great questions, it keeps me talking, keeps me really answering the things that people want to hear, not just me talking about ducks. So thanks Brock, I really appreciate it. And we'll uh, see you in, um, uh, in just a little bit, I hope. in stream up there. Bye, Brock. Brock says right before we go, okie dokie. See you later, guys. Later, guys.